Uh, thank you very much, Chris. Terrific time, boy, what a great time. I thought last year was fantastic. This year has topped it. So many great people that I've gotten to know just over the intervening year. As, as Chris said, my name is Gardner Goldsmith, and uh, you might be familiar with me from the Liberty Conspiracy website or Free Talk Live, where Ian and Mark are gracious enough to let me sit in with them on Mondays when I can make it over to Keene. And uh, thank you very much to those guys. And yes, amazon.freetalklive.com is uh, terrific. I, I, you know, I'm here, as Chris mentioned, um, because, well, for a number of reasons. First, because I want to congregate with, as Glenn Jacobs said earlier, the legions of liberty. I just thought that that was a fantastic statement. If you didn't get to see Glenn Jacobs speak earlier, totally fantastic speech about economics, the Austrian School of Economics, and the, the, the world in which we live right now because of government and how it affects our lives. And many of us came to this this spot here, philosophically, geographically, temporally, um, because of various stimuli, various reasons, whether it was because we were brought up by libertarians, we were brought up by paleoconservatives or liberals or, or whatever. We fought our teachers in the government schools. I used to have one who used to pull my hair when I would talk about how FDR's alphabet soups of agencies weren't doing anything to help people back then. She almost poured a soda over my head, and that's what happened. Um, <laughs> But, you know, I realized that ours is a tradition of individual liberty. That's individual liberty. <laughs> Ridley Report. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's audio recording. <laughs> And I gotta say, there, there is a lineage of philosophers, political philosophers and economists who articulated things, and we stand upon their shoulders. And, you know, sometimes it almost gets me choked up to think about some of the things that they went through, and some of the things they passed on to us. Some of these ideas we spontaneously came up with ourselves, but others were passed on to us. People like John Locke, well, people like Aristotle. I mean, Aristotle was the first one to talk about the right to self-defense. Aristotle, heck of a lot better than Socrates and Plato, I'll tell you that. Just, just see the watchman in the low end of the um, And he didn't need any parable of the cave to express it. Uh, John Locke, Frederick Bastia, uh, Thomas Paine, Adam Smith, Lysander Spooner, Carl Menger, Ludwig von Mises, F.A. Hayek, Albert J. Nock, Ayn Rand, Henry Hazlitt, Murray Rothbard, so many more went through their times of troubles trying to raise families, begin families, do their businesses. Who knows what was going on in their lives? Frederick Bastian, at the last five years of his life, boom, he produced some of the most brilliant things ever in the history of man before he died from tuberculosis. And to think about the, the way those people, people sacrificed really energized me. And so, Thanks to the work of Jeremy Ferb Furbish, who is a Free State member. Some of you might know Ferb. Ferb! Hello, Ferb! Um, this tradition of, of highlighting and concentrating attention on pro-freedom thinking, as articulated in books, has been turned into the Freedom Book Club, freedombookclub.com. And Ferb approached me, and he said, Guard, he knew me, he used to listen, used to, listen to me on my radio program, and he, he, he decided to apply his skills to promoting today's libertarian writers, and he created the Freedom Book Club. It's a website where libertarians can go and visit, and each month vote on a book that they would like to see promoted in the mainstream, to see the concentrated buying power of libertarian people who will consistently try to make an effort to go there. Maybe they won't buy it every month, but they'll try to pick up the book that's voted on. It's a tacit agreement that, you know what, you vote, give it a shot. And it concentrates buying power on that book, the way Ron Paul's book bomb was so successful. And of course, Ron Paul was very successful as well in the way that he put that book together. So, this year, for the first year, the Freedom Book Club has made the extra effort to do two things. First, to celebrate, to celebrate the Freedom Book Club Book of the Year, those people who visited the website were given the opportunity to vote on all those books that were up each month. Which book do you think is the, the one that you would say deserves the greatest recognition for freedom? <laughs> <laughs> the law lasts! 
Yeah. It has to be a poem. Good, good point. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll have to get into an abs that abstract discussion later. Um, and so what he's done, they have selected one book. All the votes are in for the Freedom Book Club Book of the Year for 2008 going into 2009. It has not been mentioned on the website. It will be mentioned tonight. And the award will be given out tonight. He is also doing something I wanted to mention to you. He has produced the second chance ballot for those books that did not make the Freedom Book Club Book of the Year. But people really like them nonetheless. People can log online and the balloting will end, I believe, at the end of March, the 31st. They can vote right here. As Chris worked on this, you've got it in your packets and you can drop off your vote for the book of the follow-up book of the year over in that box, Liz, right? And then Liz. Yes, Liz versus right Liz. Here. Okay, Liz, oh, very nice. I like it with the hands, very good. Yeah, oh, what's that? Oh, and they'll be at registration tomorrow. Um, the box will be there. Okay, great, so if you haven't dropped off, Please do take the time to vote, because this will be for a second chance book, and it will, again, it will be a wonderful thing to really attract attention to that particular book. Now, the question, what is the book of the year? What is the book that all the people who visited this website from all around the world decided deserve the recognition for the greatest work promoting freedom that was promoted at the website? There were a lot of competitors, Ron Paul, Randy Barnett, Thomas DiLorenzo, Murray Rothbard, F. Paul Wilson, and the winner, the author of a book that you might have seen outside, and our next speaker is the recipient of the 2008 Freedom Book Club Book of the Year Award, Dr. Mary Ruart for healing our world in an age of aggression.